Hi, and welcome to the 10 Square Meter Workshop. For many, the perfect way of joining together sheet materials into furniture or other goods is the Festool Domino. This piece of equipment certainly seems to have an aura of perfection about it. I can certainly understand why someone who assembles sheet goods into furniture as a living would want one. It's a ready made solution off the shelf. However, for the rest of us, it's certainly quite expensive. A thousand to twelve hundred pounds, depending on which model you choose. And the dominoes themselves are far from cheap. And replacement cutters, yes, they're dear too. But the domino is far from perfect. For a start, there's an element of slop in the width of the join to allow for the fact that it's all laid out by hand and that can never be perfect. Secondly, you really must use dust extraction. The manufacturers warn against using this without dust extraction. So what are the alternatives? Well, there's the biscuit, of course. But really, everything you could say about the domino applies to the biscuit, plus it's not as strong. Then, of course, there's dowels. This is the go-to solution in industry, but there, of course, the holes are being made by CNC machine, so you know they're absolutely aligned. And that's a crucial issue, alignment of dowels. To be clear, double doweling is the best engineering solution for most applications. It is just as strong, gives better location and is much cheaper. There are plenty of dowel jigs on the market, scores of them. The trouble is the vast majority are there to put single or a group of dowels in one place. The issue is spacing the dowels along the length of the join. They have to be precisely placed. What we need is a jig for that. There is another problem with many jigs. When you want to join one part to another at right angles, the crucial point is this one. This means that the dowel has to be an equal distance from the outside face as shown. So the hole has to be measured from this face on the horizontal part and this one on the vertical. If using an angle jig to place the holes, then the jig has to be turned end to end. This means the jig has to be both accurate in every hole, and the jig needs to have end stops that can be adjustable. The solution to this is to use a T-jig. After drilling one part, it translates to the other. There is only one critical dimension, meaning the jig holes need to be square, but otherwise accuracy is not critical. So, can we make a jig that meets these criteria? I believe we can. I could, of course, just machine one out of metal. Then it would be very accurate. But I really wanted to design one that could be made by anyone with a minimum amount of equipment. The only machine tools required for this build are a pillar drill and a fairly decent machine vise. This is a worthwhile item if you don't have one. They're ever so useful. The main piece is made out of straight grained hardwood, maple in this case, or beech or ash would have done just as well. I'm only making my jig 300mm long. By flipping it to the two ends of the piece, I can go up to 700mm, the widest I'm ever likely to use. It would of course be quicker to make a full length one, but I shan't be using it enough to be worth all that effort. The back plate is made of a piece of aluminium strip. I could have used wood for this, but I like the accuracy you get from using metal. There's no machining involved. I drill two 6mm holes, 75mm in from each end, and then drill through into the wooden block. This was then counterboard from the other side, in 6mm inserts fitted, and the two bolted together. I marked out the block with a line 8mm in, that's good for material from 50 millimeters up, 50 and 100 millimeters in from each end. They're going to be my dowel points. These were then drilled through with a 10 millimeter drill. The resulting holes were then tapped out with a 12mm tap. I then made four inserts with slotted heads. 
These are half a millimetre shorter than the thickness of the wood. They were cut from a piece of threaded rod, held with lock nuts in the vice. These were liberally coated with glue and inserted so they just blew the surface on both sides and then left to thoroughly dry. I then sanded the end square. And fitted the end stop to one end. It's now back in the drill press where it's carefully levelled. These cuts are the important ones. First of all, a centre drill. A 4mm pilot. Then 6mm. And finally eight. And this process is repeated for each of the holes. So that's all the dowel holes drilled out and it's ready for testing. I shall use these two scraps of furniture board to try it out. With the jig lightly clamped in place, I drill the first part. The jig flipped over until the second part. So now I have the two sets of holes drilled. I know what some of you may be thinking. It takes extra time to clamp the jig. Well yes, but then there's no marking out. That saves both time and the possibility of error. Time to put them together. Dials on one side. Align the pins. And they're in. It's a snug fit on the inside. The outside looks equally true. I genuinely cannot see light on the outside. That is a very good match. I was genuinely surprised at how accurate this small jig turned out to be. It doesn't take up much space in storage and it gives you very accurate dowel jigs. I'm really very pleased with it. Want to make a T-joint in the middle of a sheet? Just take the back off the jig. Then lay the jig along your pencil line and you're good to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this build and are encouraged to have a go yourself. Why not subscribe? And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.